This video is on making that trio of some fish just like that big one. Here's the color pattern. We're going to first start off with uh, cutting out our stencil. I have it drawn on both sides. We're going to transfer that to our pieces of wood and then cut it out on the bandsaw. And we're just going to use the bandsaw to cut out the shape of the lure. I'm not going to do any rounding with the bandsaw. So here we're going to take the belt sander and sand off the edges to a smooth edge. The bandsaw leaves kind of a rough jagged edge. Notice that I'm using the curved portion of my belt sander. This allows me to get into those curved portions of my bait. Now that I've got it sanded, I'm going to transfer the stencil to the bait. I'm using my dimpler. I've got a video on this if you're curious. Basically, I'm just poking the lines so I can go back and connect the dots. I've also got the hinges drawn in and I'm going to go, go ahead and start cutting those. I'm not going to cut them all the way through. I am going to cut them so I know where they're at so I don't lose them. It's much easier to do this when it's flat. Like I said, we're not going to go all the way through because it's way easier to carve out when it's still intact. You can use guides to help get a straighter cut. Using a razor saw, this is a Japanese razor saw, very thin cut, lots of teeth. The more teeth you can get on that saw, the better. Now we're going to do the chamfers. This is what the chamfers look like after we're done. Now to cut out the chamfers, what we do is we uh, draw lines on the sides about equal distance apart, depending on how you want to bevel your edges, how much you want to bevel them. And then we cut it straight to those lines. Usually you want to take off a little bit at a time and work your way down to the two lines together, but you want a flat line in between those. Your wood will kind of determine how much you can take off. Now we're going to sand the bait down and I'm just hand sanding this. It doesn't take very long since I've already cut in the bevels and this just rounds everything over real nicely. I'm using 320 grit sandpaper. I'm going to work literally every side of this with the sandpaper, even the front tip. So this is what it looks like before I sand with just the chamfer lines. This is what it looks like after I sand. Now I lost some of the stencil when I chamfered it, so I'm going to go ahead and retransfer it on using that same dumpling technique. Here I'm just retracing the lines. I kind of extrapolated across for the lip and the gills. Now we're starting the carving process. So a lot of times you start off with cutting straight down following your stencil, and then you cut down along the sides to bevel it in. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're doing carving is the part you want to stick out, you don't want to carve that area. So you're going to carve down the stuff to it. So if I have a fin, I'll carve down the body around the fin. I won't actually carve the fin. I might when, when I want to put detail into the fin, but the actual fin itself, if I want it to stick out, I'm going to carve the body down around the fin. Same with the gills. So I'm carving down to the gills. This makes them stand out. So like I said, a lot of times we carve down around the stencil and then I'm going to carve the body down to that line, and that makes the object stand out. I didn't film it, but when I get done, a lot of times I'll go through, at least with sandpaper, and clean it up, kind of smooth it up. Uh, sometimes I'll take some files if it's really rough.
now I'm drilling out the eye socket. I, I like using a brad bit on this. They give me a nice eye, eye socket, nice flat section. And they also have a point on the tip that allows me to get it right where I need it. Now here I'm weighing it just to get a feel for how much weight I need to add to it. Now there's a big long calculation to do with it, and I've got that in other videos. Basically weighing all my hardware and the weights that I'm going to add to it and seeing if it's going to be buoyant or neutrally buoyant or sinking. These I designed to be sinking. They didn't put as much weight in it as I calculated, but it still sunk. <laughs> I drew a center line so I could keep everything in place, and now I'm just going through and marking where I'm going to put the hook hangers and the weights. I'm actually putting a pretty nice mark in there, and this allows me to drill those spots out without the drill bit skipping. So the weight was too big to actually put into the bait, so I had to smash it. And lead smash is really easy, just literally just dropping the hammer on top of this. Flattened. Here I'm using my Fordham to carve out little pockets for the weights to sit in. Basically I have a bunch of diamond bits of different sizes. I just pick one that's close to the size of the weight that I need to put in there. I'm just smashing that lead weight in there, cutting it up into pieces and smashing it in. I'll go ahead and super glue it at the end too to make sure it uh, stays in there. I use a thin super glue that kind of flows around it, but I literally just smash it in there. Lead deforms real easy, so you can actually just smash it in there with the pliers. Now I'm drilling for the hardware. This one got kind of tricky because you had to keep your angles right and make sure you were able to get on all the hardware. Now on this bait I did have a continuous through wire that attached directly to each wire through the whole bait. Now I'm cutting all the rest of the joints out. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back and finish cutting those joints. Just working both sides down until it comes free. Once I get that cut out, I go ahead and sand it down either with files or sandpaper. Let's we'll smooth it out. Notice I'm using this little clamp to hold it so I can keep my fingers away from the bait. Just in case it for some reason blows out the side, I don't drill through my finger. <laughs> Trying to get it started in the right spot. I use a drill to twist my wire. This is for my hard hardware and hook hangers. And then I, I do just super glue uh, a lot of these in. I use that super thin super glue so it gets down in there. A lot of times I'll go over it, uh, I'll actually put a thicker super glue on the actual hardware itself when I put it in. That way it kind of fills the gaps, but like I said, this one was tricky because I had to really think about how I was getting all the hardware in this one. <laughs> Small baits are much harder. That's all I gotta say.
We're dipping it in a sanding sealer, and this is just a typical Minwax sanding sealer. I think this one's water-based. Not my favorite, I like the oil-based better, but it's all I have. I'm gonna just hang them to dry. I give them a sand, and then I usually dip them again. I think I, I, think I dip these twice. Now we're gonna start painting, and we're gonna start with an opaque black. We're gonna cover the whole bait in opaque black, and that may be an odd color to start with, you may think, but a black makes the pearl stand out a lot better. Now we're going to a Wicked Bronze. This is a pearlized paint. It has kind of a copper look to it. And this is all bottom coat, so this, this is mostly gonna get covered up. I'm gonna cover the top with a pearl green. Like I said, on the black, it makes that pearl green a much darker color. And it makes that silver stand out a little bit more, the mica color. Now I've covered it in a scale pattern. This is just window screen. And I'm gonna spray paint it with an opaque white. I'm just covering the top. I'm gonna to leave the bottom pretty much exposed. <laughs> Now I'm going over it with a pearl blue. This is a real light coat of pearl blue. I want a light colored pearl blue. <laughs> now I'm going over it with a pearl white, which basically is kind of a silver color. You can barely see it. I, I don't even know if you can see it when I'm spraying it on, on this video. I want a little more green in it, so I went over it with a fluorescent yellow, and this worked out really good. It gave me that perfect color that I was looking for. Now I'm gonna hit with a tangerine pearl. I'm just getting the bottom of this. This gives me the orange color that I'm looking for. I really like that tangerine pearl. So I took the mesh off, now you can see kind of what the scales did. But the black on the bottom, makes the black line stand out in the scales more. So I've got the stencil taped down over this and I'm hitting it again with that orange, that tangerine orange. And now I'm gonna go back and hit the very top of that stencil with a sepia. And this gives me a dark top spot and a orange bottom spot. Like I said, you can see that dark top hey, and the there you go. orange bottom. Now I'm going back over the face. I want to redo the face completely. I don't really want the scale pattern in the face. So I whited it out. And we're going to repeat that whole process of white, blue, white, pearl, fluorescent yellow. Now I'm going over the face with the stencil and I'm actually just kind of pressing out like you would on a normal stencil with the orange and then I'm hitting it with a sepia. Now I'm blending that sepia at the top end on the face. Now I'm going to hit the very bottom with a pearl copper, which is more of a gold. And that gives me the bright yellow that the sunfish are really known for. I'm just doing some small details with the hand brush, little black dot on the gills. Then I'll also go back and outline it in white here. Now I'm going to hit the very end of the gill with a fluorescent orange dot. I like the fluorescent orange, kind of gives the bass something to key in on to. I'm actually painting on the, the fins on this one. I felt like painting it was better than trying to do a stencil. And we're at last, we're adding the eyes on this. And there it is, ready to be clear coated. 
One of the most common problem points people have is with the two-part clear coat epoxy. I use a BSI 30 minute epoxy. I don't have too much problems with it. It's a one part to one part ratio and you just eyeball that out and if you're going to err, err on the side of extra hardener. And one of the other tricks that I do too is I will throw a heater on this as it's rotating and that'll help cure your epoxy. Just throw some heat on it while it's going for about a half an hour and it cures up just fine. For these, I went ahead and tied a tail. These are just simple hackle feathers. Whatever color you want to do, I'm just putting one on each side of the treble hook. And here we have our bait fully assembled. If you have any questions about any steps in the process, feel free to ask. I, I will answer your questions as soon as I can, and if I can. If you have something else you would like me to make too, just let me know in the comments. I have some underwater footage of this coming up, uh, so you can kind of see the actions on them. It's pretty cold out, so I wasn't able to get in and place the cameras in the water like I normally do, but I got some footage of it. trying out a new lens on my camera. This is a dome port lens and where you can see partly above the water and partly below the water. Let me know if you like that. I've got a video on how to make that coming up, so stay tuned. <laughs> 